Hey guys, are you watching this video trying to learn how to catch catfish? Are you a beginner? In this video right here, we're going to show you how to, the five most common techniques or methods for catching catfish. So check it out. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share and comment below. Peace. Okay guys, the first most common method or technique to catch catfish and a lot of them is trout lines. Trout line is basically tying a string that has multiple hooks with a weight at the end, stretching it all the way out to the middle of the river or creek or pond, and leaving that unattended overnight and coming back to check it in the morning and to see if you got fish. Let's go to talk about pros and cons. The pros to uh, using a trout line is you do have multiple hooks out there, so you can uh, catch a lot of fish. It does cover a broader area when stretched out from the bank to the center of the river or creek. And it is basically somewhat hidden, so it's kind of hard to find trout lines. But also, that can also be a dangerous thing. So let's talk about cons. There's a high chance of catching turtles. When you do have these trout lines stretched out at the bottom, all these hooks at the bottom, you have all these bait fish sitting at the bottom, either whether it's cut bait or worms or livers, you're giving it uh, easy access for turtles to get to that. So while they're sitting overnight, turtles can easily snack on that. You may come back to empty lines, or you may come back to big old snapping turtles sitting on your line. And another problem is trout lines can damage propellers if not marked properly. So please mark your trout, uh, trout lines properly. If you mark them properly, when people go by on their boats, they have a better chance of not running over that trout line, getting it tangled in their propeller, costing them a lot of money. Also, another thing is multiple hooks with a lot of string can be dangerous, especially for fishermen uh, fishing from boats. There's always a chance that that boat can be moving in high current or high uh, flood waters like in the Missouri right now. And should you slip or should a kid slip and get a hook caught on their pants, or on their shorts, or on their shirt that is attached to this trout line with this weight at the end. And then you're moving in fast current, could snatch someone out of the boat and into the water. And if they're not wearing a life jacket, they could very easily drown. This could be a very dangerous, dangerous situation. So guys, always remember to wear your life jacket. Now what you're looking at guys is your basic trout line. This is something that I actually put together. So what you got is you got a three quarter inch PVC pipe with a small blue noodle attached on the outside. It's not really attached. It's just I slid it over the PVC pipe and put caps on the end. Now on one end I have drilled a hole and where I did is drilled that hole and tied this trout line string to it but this is end of the string that I would tie to a tree a log jam a bush something or a large rock if you're fit if you're fishing like by a riprap and there's big rocks you can also tie this to a rock so you're not out of a uh, chance to fish if you're fishing by rock um, you also want to have your weight at the end I do have a two and a half pound weight on that now this particular one, I have the line attached to the inside of this PVC pipe. Now, I have it all wound around this, except for, except for some that I did pull out for you guys to see. Now, what I did is I make these, type, I make these type of knots in the string. So that way, I can put this particular type of leader on with a trout line clip onto that. So basically, really all I did was pull this up like so, and then tie it like this. That gives you a solid loop, and then you take your trout line, trout line clip, and that's how you squeeze it. You want that to slide over the paracord. And then you let it slide back in place and it's stuck. And guys, you put about 10 of these on a trout line 
Here in Missouri, you can have up to 33 hooks in the water. So if you're trout lining, you can make you three trout lines with 10 hooks. That leaves you three hooks for three rod and reels while you're fishing. And that right there is how I made my trout lines. And that, guys, is how probably the easiest way to catch catfish and the easiest way to catch a lot of catfish. Now let's move on to the next method. All right, guys, to the next method, and that is jugging. Jugging is real fun, guys. It's simply taking any kind of buoyant object that you can tie a string to with a hook and a sinker, and that buoyant object can float in the water, and you bait that with cut bait or a live bait, and there you have a jug, baby. So that's how you make a jug. Let's get to these pros and cons. Okay, the pros for jugging when you're out here jugging on lakes or rivers or uh, your local ponds is you definitely can get out in deeper water. So you're going to find a bigger fish and maybe you stand a better chance of landing a bigger fish. There are definitely jugs or you do want to mark your jugs so you want to make them easy to find. But because they're buoyant, it's really hard to lose them when the fish takes it down. All you have to do is wait a little bit. Eventually, that uh, jug will come back up. And a good-sized jug, guys, will catch a big fish. You can guarantee that. The cons on jugs is people do check jugs. So if you let your, leave your jugs unattended and people see those jugs floating in water, bobbing up and down, somebody's always bound to check that jug. So always make sure that you're close by or you set your jugs in a secluded area where not too many boaters are riding around. Um, definitely watch your lines on your jugs because if you set your lines way too deep, it could get tangled if not done right. So say you set your line and you got 20 feet of line on the bottom of your jug and you let all that out and you've got five, six, seven hooks on that jug and you get a couple big fish on there and they drag that jug along the bank and they get that jug twisted up in structure or log jams or some kind of uh, entanglement under the water or kind of some kind of snags under the water, they definitely can cause you to have problems. You could lose fish unless you're willing to get in the water and get your fish out, which in the Missouri River, I suggest you not do that. That's a bad idea. So what we're going to do is going to take a look at the type of jugs that I've got and what I make. So we'll be right back. Okay, what you're looking at is one of my jug design. The actual jug itself kind of looks like what I have attached to my trout line. Got the noodle, three quarter inch PVC, capped both ends. Why this is bright down here is because I actually got a um, reflector tape that's bright, real bright reflector tape that's taped on that end. This would be the top end, so you would be able to find these at night when you flash a light. And on the bottom end, I drilled a hole and screwed in a eye screw. And don't mind the string, I use this to hang up, but I am drilled in this eye screw and this eye screw is for the bottom so I can attach a clip swivel. This is the top of my line, so I just attach a clip, clip swivel like this, close that down. This clip swivel is pretty strong test, so I don't worry about it getting bent very often. And then I have what you're looking at here is I tied a basically a drop shot rig to a three ounce bank sinker and I go up about two feet. I tie two knots and in between those two knots I put a barrel swivel in between those two knots. The knots are to keep the barrel swivel from going past those two knots. And the type of leader that I use to attach onto that is basically like this snail knot tied to a clip swivel and I take that clip swivel and I hook that onto my barrel swivel just like this and that's probably about four to five inches on that leader and now when you 
are fishing, you lay this jug flat. This noodle on here will keep this buoyant. Now when a fish hits this, I have a sinker inside, a barrel sinker. You can hear that. That barrel sinker, when that fish it hits this, that will turn this jug straight up and down like this. And you will see the reflector tape at the top if it's at night. And this jug will be going up and down. Don't worry about losing the jug. The fish can't take it anywhere. All you can do is take it down for so long. Eventually, it's got to come back up. And then it will stay uh, up and down pretty much vertical. And that's how you know you got a fish on. And that, my friends, guys, is the second method for catching catfish the easy way. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, guys, the third most used technique. And the third, uh, from the easiest to the hardest, would be limb lines, a.k.a. or throw lines. Limb lines are tied from a limb from a tree that is about six to eight feet from the bank. And you want to drop your lines anywhere from about eight to 15 feet of water on a limber limb or a strong branch that is flexible. Make sure it is not an old branch because a good fish will break that off. Make sure you tie it off on the end and while it's out there on that off of the edge of the current seam and or that nature on the edge of the uh, ledge that you're fishing, it puts it just deep enough for the flatheads and the blues to hit it. And when they hit it, they're going to be bouncing. And when you ride by in your boat, you're going to see some bouncing tree lines, baby. Shaking trees. That's what I like to call it. Shaking trees for catfish, baby. Now, your pros and cons for setting limb lines are going to be, when you set limb lines, they're definitely going to set out further than bank posts. Unless you got a really long bank pole, a 14-foot bank pole, a 16-foot bank pole, which I have yet to see very many of those, or any at all for that matter. I can't find any. The longest I've ever found is a 12-footer from my guy, um, Adam, at Tombstone Tackles. So if you're here in Columbia, Missouri, check them out, Tombstone Tackles, where you're going to get your fiberglass bank pole rods. Um, also, another pro is... As simple as tying a string and a hook to a flexible tree limb or a branch. And as long as you can find one of those hanging over the river or the lake or the pond that you're fishing, you're always going to be able to set limb lines. So check your local regulations and make sure limb lines are legal. And if they are, set away, baby, set away. They are discreet in some cases. So always make sure that you use like black line, but always make sure that you use the proper tagging. Um, here you got to use your name, your address, and your conservation number. So that way when the conservation officer comes by and checks your lines, he knows that that line belongs to you. Now some of the cons are when people see shaking tree limbs, they just have to check your poles. It's just almost a disease. It's, I call them river pirates. they always out there checking poles, still in fish, still in tackle. That's what they do. So if you want to make sure that you can save your fish, find a secluded spot to set your limb line or make sure that you are out there checking your limb lines every two hours, baby, every two hours. The one other con is the limb lines could tear away and break from the tree. So if you don't pick the correct limb, a nice green flexible limb, almost like what your grandma used to use for a switch back in the day. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about for those guys who used to get the switching from the grandmas. Um, now, in this situation, the one con is the limb lines are, I believe, are definitely better in flood conditions when the water is in the tree lines because uh, the definitely uh, the catfish are feeding in the trees, bugs falling out of the trees, and the catfish are down in the roots hiding out of the current. Definitely a good place to set bait is off on limb lines right out there where the catfish are coming in and out so i can't really demonstrate a limb line but i'm going to show you the actual string and the kind of line you would set which is going to be basically similar to what i did on the uh, jug line so guys basically you want at least a 
if you're doing a limb line, you want your string to at least be, oh, mm, we'll say 15 to 20 feet. Make sure you can get to the bottom. Um, basically, you got a bank sinker at the bottom. And so you want it pretty much to, it, to touch the bottom and then pull it up a little bit so your line's tout, so you know that the bank sinker is just dangling, touching the bottom and your bait is directly over that and it is about two feet over that and then you attach that same kind of uh, leader line that I had with the clip swivel on there onto that actual swivel right there and then you were putting it about two feet above the bottom because if you ever look at catfish when you catch them their eyes typically are above their head, especially a flathead. So if he's laying down on the bottom of that creek or the bottom of that lake or river, and he's looking up and all he sees is just over his head is a dangling bait, then that can't go nowhere, that's stationary and that's stuck, he will slam that bite, bait, guys. He will slam that bait. If you don't believe me, check out my channel, Bank Pole Joe. What I do is Bank Pole for Catfish. On my last few videos, I did use drop shot rigs on those videos, and I got some nice fish, so don't forget to check it out. I'll put the link to that video in uh, the description below and to that channel in the description below. So check it out, guys. Bank Pole Joe, I'm growing. I'm on my way to 1K on that channel, so check me out. Okay, guys, fourth most common method for catching catfish and catching catfish the easy way is bank poles or ditty poles. This is the process of getting a stick, tying a string to that stick, sticking it into the ground in about a 45 degree angle. Uh, on the end of that string, putting a, putting a hook and a bait and leaving it either dangling top water or dangling at the bottom, off just off the bottom, let it touch the bottom and then pull it up about two feet. And then you are bank pulling, baby. That's what I do on my other channel, Bank Pole Joe. I bank pole for catfish. So if you want to know what bank poles is all about, check out that channel. And here's the pros and cons of bank pulling, a.k.a. Diddy Poles. The pros are they're very simple to make, very low maintenance, and they increase the chance of getting the big one. Guys, when I started out fishing, I started out rod and reel fishing. I could not catch a fish to save my life. It was always hit or miss, spending a lot of hot summer days out trying to catch fish. Um, wanted to know why I couldn't catch fish, but I see all these fishermen coming into Tombstone Tackle with these big monster 40, 50, 60 pound fish. This is how they were doing it, guys. None of them were rod and reeling or uh doing anything else but setting bank poles, ditty poles, and trout lines. It is very hard around here to rod and reel a 60, 70, 80 pound fish. But it is possible if you set out on the bank long enough or you set out, out in your boat long enough. But if you don't want to wait for that and you want to catch big fish while you relax at home and sleep at home, then bank pole and ditty pole is where it's at. Now let me show you what some bank poles and ditty poles look like. Okay guys, I'm going to show you three of the most common styles of bank poles that are out there. This is what everybody is using. So if you're a bank poler or you're trying to learn how to bank pole, these are the three that everybody is using right now. It's the first one that everybody is using is your basic bank pole. Three quarter inch PVC with string wrapped around the end. Now you unravel the string until you get it basically, you stick your pole in the ground, 45 degree angle. You wrap this string, unravel the string until you get it just about underneath the water level where the sinker is just underneath the water. And that is how you set your bank pole. That is the most common way, the most common, uh, let's see, the most common material used is PVC piping. But guys, don't do this no more. Wrap your string around the end. This is a new age. This is 2019, guys. This is so back in the day. We're done with this. We are putting the strings on the inside of the poles like mud bums. If you don't know who the mud bums is, check them out. These guys, uh, they sell hog logs. They put their string inside their poles. 
and they don't have a lot of the untangled mess to mess with. Now, the second most common pole used is basically a 10 or 12 foot fiberglass tree stake. You can find these at your local bait shop or you can also go online in the description below. I'll put a link to a website where you can find some of these fiberglass tree stakes so you can buy it for yourself and store them at home and actually make your own bait poles. Now, if you want to see what I did at the end, I don't know if I can reach that. Uh, might be difficult for you to see. Let's try it. All right. Basically, guys, I do mine a little different than a lot of people do theirs. I drill the hole in the top of the PVC and I screwed in a strong, pretty strong eye screw in that. And so, what I'm doing is I'm taking um, my leader line like this. And I have a snap swivel. I'm snapping the swivel onto the end. On an already pre-measured line. And then on the other end is where I'll put my leader with the actual hook. So I have a bunch of these already cut. That's a pre-measured for holes that I frequently bank pull. So that's something you want to do, guys. If you got holes that you know you catch catfish in, Find out what the actual depth of those holes are. Pre-make your strings so you don't have a whole bunch of mess to do. Find something to wrap your strings around so you don't have a bunch of mess laying around in your boat and you don't have to take 15 hours to wrap and unwrap your string from around these poles. We're snapping strings on now and putting strings inside side poles. So we'll get rid of that one. And we'll show you the actual bank pole that I'm using on my Bank Pole Joe YouTube channel. Guys, you can see that. That string definitely comes out of the middle of that. There's no wrapping. When I pull this out, this string comes out. It's attached to a weight inside that PVC pipe. So when I bring this string back in, that weight, if you're sitting at about a 45 degree angle, will start falling back to the bottom of this pole. Just like that. And now you have no extra string wrapped around. You can throw this in your boat. You can pretty much see how quick I did that. That's how quick you're putting this bank pole away in your boat. If you want to know how to make one of these bank poles like I make, then check out my how to make bank pole video best on YouTube on my Big Muddy Catfishing channel. I'll put that link into the description below. So guys, please watch that. That's a nice looking bank pole. It's a pretty smooth idea I came up with. Um, I collaborated with another YouTuber that made a pole that was similar to that. I changed up a couple of things on the pole and I built my own. So when you get time, check that out. Remember Bank Pole Joe. That's the channel that that video is on. The link will be in the description below. Now let's move on to the last and final method for catching catfish all right guys last but not least the fifth most common used method or technique for catching catfish we all know guys rod the reel the old rod and reel pick up a bait caster pick up a spinning cast pick up a closed face and go get you some catfish baby now what we're looking at here is my personal beliefs on the pros and cons for rod and reeling for catfish in lakes, ponds, rivers, creeks, tributaries, wherever you go to catch these things. The pros is the rush of the fight when you catch a nice size fish. Guys, when you catch a nice size catfish, you'll know it because you'll fight that thing for 20, 30 minutes. I've heard of people fighting it for over an hour. But after all the sweat and blood and tears, when you finally get that catfish in, if he does not break the line, it makes for an exciting and a beautiful day, baby. Now, there are there is 
less of a chance of losing fish to unattended lines because you do not leave rod and reels unattended or there's always a good chance you're going to lose that rod and reel in the river or the lake so definitely don't do that so uh, i've lost a couple to the missouri river by making the silly mistake of leaving my rod and reel unattended either talking to people or running back to the car to go to get things that i forgot make sure that you have everything you need when you first get out on the bank even if you get skunked, it makes for a good family time. So guys, always take your family out with you at least once a month, a couple of times a year to go out riding and reeling and get some catfish. If you're somebody that doesn't have kids, find a kid, take a kid, take them out fishing, show them what catfishing is really like. I know a lot of these young fellows that are under 21 or under the age of 18, they think bass fishing is the big thing because bass fishing is the most easiest fish to get, just like bluegill. Yeah, it may be difficult to learn some of the techniques or use some of the lures and uh, fake baits that they have, but I can tell you one thing. The thrill of catching a catfish is like no other. When he hits that line, a kid's going to know it, and a kid's going to remember that experience. So remember, guys, take a kid catfishing. It could change your life. Now, the my cons on catfishing is catfishing is very time consuming, especially rod and reel. If you're rod and reeling for catfish, you have to sit all day, all night, uh, changing spots every 15 to 20 minutes looking for catfish. If you don't have a big fancy boat or you don't have a big fancy um, fish finder and you can't find all the good holes, then you spend the majority of the day guessing. So mostly it's guesswork. Bank fishing to me is more about luck. If you haven't found a spot that you're already catching fish and you don't have the knowledge of just going out there and finding holes each and every time that you walk out on the bank, then that's a problem you're definitely going to run into. Um, so definitely, if you like rod and reel fishing, guys, get it how you want to get it. But definitely rod and reel fishing is definitely hard. It's definitely not easy by any means. So anybody that tells you that catching catfish is simple, they eat any old thing, that is not the truth. I spent three years uh, on this catfish adventure, and in three years I've learned a lot. So what we're going to do is show you a quick uh, a quick clip of the three types of uh reels basically used for catfishing and uh, basic three uh, catfish rigs that I'm using on my uh, catfish rod and reels. Okay guys, first first of the three, what everybody's using is uh, your just basic closed face or press button rod and reel. And a basic catfish rig is your basic Carolina rig that is a sinker, bead, swivel, attached to a leader, attached to a hook. Now let's go to the next rig and the next reel. If you're if you've graduated from using a closed face reel, then the next reel that you're probably using at this particular time is an open face reel. There you go. It's a rip and lift rod that I'm using. I got that combined with an excursion reel using some raging Cajun line with uh, my actual rig on this is going to be a call a Kentucky rig. That's a rig I've seen Chris Flores use in his videos or some people may call it a drop shot rig if you're a bass fisherman. This is attached to a bait saver a dough bait hook that I'm going to use in a future video that I'm going to try out my dough bait that you see me make in one of my videos on this channel. If you haven't, check that out. I'll put the link to that in this channel. And the third and final rod and reel combination with the catfish rig that I like to use is what everybody likes to call the Santee Cooper rig and a bait caster. So I'm just learning how to use a bait caster, guys. Still new to the game, but this is a level wine snagging reel. 
big hefty reel. We'll do a video on that, a review on those rod and reels that I got later on down the line. Right now we're just concerned with this video. This is basically the Santee Cooper rig. It's basically a slip, slip seeker rig, AKA Carolina rig that has a float. It's got a peg float that you put on the rear part of the line between the swivel and the actual hook, which this is a grip and lift eight out hook. And then I got my peg attached there. Now, in the next video that I'm coming out with, I'll show you the top three most used catfish rigs by a fisherman. So we'll talk about these rigs more in depth. But thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment below, tell me what you think. Tell me the kind of rig that you like to use. Tell me the style of fishing that you like to do when you go catch your catfish. And thank you for watching Catfish on Demand. I'm your host, Mr. Bankpole Joe. You guys have a blessed evening.